I'm Gigi from Gigi Games. Uh, we're going to do a quick tutorial here, so let's get to it. Okay, we're going to start by building some walls with our wall tool. And now I'm going to change the style by clicking Q while in the wall tool. And that way you can pick your color, your texture before you build the wall. So it saves on painting, at least on one side. Now I want to build a sidewalk, so I'm going to click Q again and select Inward. And now we can make a sidewalk in the ground. You can do this with anything. Including the floor inside your house. If you don't want there to be a step to the front door. Speaking of front doors, let's add one of those. There you go. Now let's add some roofs. There are several roofs in the game. We're just going to add a hip roof right now. And then I'm going to choose my move tool and click Q and choose resize so that I can create a little overhang because I think all roofs have overhangs as far as I know. I'm going to make it a little taller here. You can also do a couple of cool things with the roof with the transform tool by clicking move. Uh, let's try grid snapping on. You can actually change it to be diagonal or you can free transform it and just put it at any angle that you want. I'll just undo that with the Z button and make this roof taller. Then I'm going to change the style of it. And I think we're going to go with the gable roof, but there's many different roof types. And you can also change the finish of the roof here. Some of these are colorable. I'm just going to go with the wood shingles. Now we need to get rid of this opening here. So there's two ways we can do this. We can just build a wall. Oops, I need to change this to outward. We can just build a wall as you regularly would. And then we can get rid of the top part. We'll do that in a minute. And this is my favorite way to do it. Just switch to limited by roof, yes. And then build your wall. And voila. Now if you do it this other way, you just need to go to remove walls and then on the bottom left switch it to with R switch it to only above roofs and there you go by the way I had God mode on you can turn that on or off with G now let's add some windows You can rotate the window with the mouse wheel. It's a little tricky, kind of funky to do, but you can do it. And then I'm going to change the style here, get rid of mutton bars, windowsill, add shutters, a bunch of cool things. You can open and close these shutters. They look really funny with the small window, but you can do that. You can also move these windows around, rotate them, transform them with the transform tool. Uh, it's useful, probably not with the shutters, but I don't know, maybe you want to do that. But it's useful uh, for, especially for the glass walls, which I'm going to show you in a second here. These glass walls are really cool. Uh, you can make a full wall a window if you want, top to bottom. You can rotate them. I've taken a glass ceiling and turned it into a tabletop. It's really cool these walls. Um, if you really want to get creative you can add some triangular pieces and I can't even say that word <laughs> and make funky shapes in your wall with the windows. It's just really cool. This is a grid snap rotate but you can do a free rotate and rotate it any direction out. It's really, it's kind of hard to see in there, but if you actually pull that out, which I don't do that here, if you pull the window out to the wall, you can see it a lot better when rotating. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this window. I'm going to select my hand tool, 
And if you look at the bottom when I highlight the window, it says duplicate. You're going to have to go back and look at that. But you can duplicate any item that way. I'm going to change the look of the window real quick so that I can show you how to copy and paste the style. If you look down at the bottom right here, see how it says Q copy style? You just need to click Q and then click on anything that you want that style in. You can keep clicking on all the items in your house if you want them all to have the same style. Okay, now I want to make a dormer window, so I'm going to choose a gable style roof. You can click R to click through the different styles, but we're going to choose a gable style. Then I'm going to go to my transform tool, make sure it's on resize, and I'm going to make it taller and wider until it looks like the size that I want it to be. If you put the roof on and it's facing the wrong direction, you can always move it, rotate it. I'm going to put the wall on here now. I'm going to make sure that my limited by roof option is on. And I'm going to add the wall. Now this doesn't turn out right, so I'm going to need to fix it. One, it's too high. Um, I would have to move the roof up to keep those edges from coming through, but I don't like how narrow it is, so I'm going to make it wider and shorter. I'm going to get rid of the walls above by using remove walls, making sure only above roofs is on. And then I'm going to add the new wall. And there we go. Now it just needs a little window. Um, if I cared what I was doing, I'd make sure that was centered and probably need a bigger window. Okay, let's get to the paint tool. You can change the material, anything you want, with the paint tool. Just by clicking Q at the bottom, uh, you can change a cut pattern on some items like stone and wood. You can change the rotation the size of it, the size of the, in this case, the strips, as you can see. You can do some pretty cool things. You just really need to play around with everything to kind of see what you can do. I've spent a lot of time doing that. Oh, that's hideous. Anyway, when you actually find something you like, while you're in the paint tool, you can click Q on what you do like and it'll change at the bottom left hand corner and then you can paint. Now this is a tool that you would use to paint the edges on the roof. Oh, bad rotation. Let's change that rotation. Oh, get rid of the cut pattern. Even better. Uh, this house is great. You can change the color of the roof. <laughs> I don't know why you'd want stone for the roof, so let's change that. There we go. That's even worse. Maybe. Let's try a different color here. I don't know, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, let's add a quick ceiling here because I want to add some lights and show you a little bit about the light tool and kind of a couple things you could do with it. So let's just pick a light here. This is a resizable one, so we're going to go ahead and resize it. There are some that are not resizable, that there are some that are. Use the transform tool and resize it. This works really great for those very high vaulted ceilings. Now here's another little trick that I use because sometimes I want like a funky light, but this light is not resizable. So you can just bring the light with your move tool right below the resizable one and kind of make a new light. You can also uncheck grid snapping on the move tool for uh, if you want it to be perfectly lined up, kind of like that. Now let's add a light switch and I'll show you the new electricity tool. Then using your tool, you go ahead and click on the light switch and the light. You can add more than one light. You can add 50 lights. Uh, 
that's really bright so I'm going to remove them from the group and just click on the one light. When you're replacing items you can't clip the walls. However, if you use the move tool you can actually move an item into the wall, into a cabinet, you can pretty much do anything you want with the move tool as far as where you place things. Um, in this case I'm gonna make a pillow out of this stool. If you've watched my videos you've probably seen me do this, um, but if you think of all of the creative ways you can use items in this game you can pretty much do anything. I made a Kleenex out of a box and a towel with the move tool. There are several special items in the game that are sandbox only. One of them is this triangle. There's moldings and pillars and different things. Uh, this triangle you can make a diagonal wall which I'm going to show you right now. Uh, it could be a little finicky but because we don't have diagonal walls in game right now uh, this is kind of the best we got if you want to make a diagonal wall. So I just get two of these pieces that are exactly the same and line them up so that they make the wall and I will show you the painful process of that right now. You'll be switching through grid snapping on and grid snapping off when doing this uh, with the move tool. I use grid snapping on to line up the wall perfectly before I start with the grid snap off. So as you see here I'm trying to get the wall lined up. Again it's a painful process. Um, and at this point I'm going to now want to rotate the wall and I'm going to remove grid snapping. This is where it gets real fun. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and paint it. So let's get out the paint tool and choose a color. I'm just going to choose a regular little gray here and paint these walls. Uh, it's not lined up perfectly, I can tell right now. But uh, like I said, it's real fun. You just have to spend the time and you can line it up perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and show you one more angle so you can see that you can do it in any angle you want. You can't really tell at this angle, so I'm just going to switch it up a little bit. Um, both of them, you're going to have to go back in there and adjust it real nice. It's a uh, real interesting wall right there, but I, I do have a trick. When I get a space, the separated space like that, I just try and make it so it lines up perfectly like that, and then you can bring it in. This is still not perfect, um, as you can tell by the paint, but if you fiddle with it, it'll get easier, and you can have a perfect diagonal wall. I've done it, it just takes some time. Okay, let's go over some terrain tools. Uh, let's start with mowing the lawn. Uh, if you have to mow the entire lawn on a plot, that's super fun, let me tell you, because you just have this little ball and you can either make the grass longer or shorter. Let's go ahead and make some hills with the land edit tool. Uh, you can adjust the intensity here. You can also adjust the radius. This is at a higher intensity and it makes a real high mountain quickly. I usually use the lower intensity and I use my scroll wheel to adjust the radius and it makes a nice little soft mountain like that or hill. <laughs> you can also make holes. Um, you can adjust the intensity on that as well to make really deep holes or shallow. So I'm going to make a mountain here. In order to do that, I'm going to need a couple tools. So first, I'm going to make the land really high, a big piece of it. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. I'm going to start with a really high
high mountain and then you want to pick this flat terrain tool thingy and the square. As you can see, the dot in the middle of the screen is at the very top of the mountain and down below that it says Q sample height. I'm going to click Q to sample the height. As you see when I do that, it now shows that the height is at the top. Now it shows select first point, where you click and select the first point, drag and click again, and there we go. We've got uh, the start of the mountain. So now I'm going to make little hills around the mountain with kind of a mid intensity. And I will show you why I'm doing this in a second. But we're just going to make some random hills because the mountain is pretty random. Now I'm going to choose this smoother, it smooths the terrain, turn the intensity up, then I'm going to start smoothing it out. I want to include the hill and the what we're calling the mountain. So it's smoothing it out, now we're going to add some more hills and smooth it some more. You just kind of play around with it by adding hills and then smoothing it out and it makes like this smooth kind of mountain. I'm going to show you a quick method here on how to make a hobbit hole house. It will be very quick, very ugly, but it gives you the idea. There are several different ways you could do this. This is just one of them um, and maybe you can use it. After you make your mountain, you'll click land hole select your first point and then your second point then click R to make the hole you can't see it so click another tool and then you'll be able to see the interesting black hole go into the ground and you can build the walls the ceilings you can use stairs and build it down all the way to ground and make a dungeon I don't know, you can do whatever you want to do if I was making a hobbit house I would have made the mountain much bigger and the I would have used the land tool and made that opening right there a lot bigger probably. I'd probably make my house go the front of it, go outside of it, but you could just make a tunnel. I don't know, you'd have to work with it. But this is just an option um, to do it. You can also edit the border on your plot. Just click edit borders and click and drag make it smaller, you can make it bigger. I think there is a limit on how small or how big, but it's really easy to do if you pick the, the wrong land size. To paint the land, we're going to go ahead and choose land painting. When I make mountains or hills, I usually add dirt to them a little bit to try and make it look more realistic. I use a low intensity and just kind of put a little bit of dirt around. Um, I usually cut the grass a bit on the top. Sometimes I'll have a little bit of longer grass. I usually like shorter grass. And then I'll go and add some more grass paint back on a very low intensity to the dirt area. A little bit. You can kind of see it. And it makes it look more realistic. I usually add rocks. I think I always add rocks <laughs> to mountains or even little hills outside the front yard. Um, I usually just kind of place a rock somewhere and then I grab my fishing rod tool. This is a very cool tool. So I'll place a bunch of plants or rocks. I'll turn gravity off and then I just place the rocks inside the mountain um, you can scroll to change the distance, you can click control to rotate, and then you just place them kind of where you want. And you can go back and use the move tool if you want to get it to be even more precise. This is my favorite rock right here. It makes kind of rock like rock ledges, but it also covers a lot of land. So you don't have to put 15,000 rocks, you can just put one rock.
Now I like to add bushes around my rocks, just kind of poking out here and there. Again, it makes it look realistic. <laughs> Let's grab fishing rod and just kind of plop them in there, kind of poking out a bit. Um, and play with it, but uh, I think it adds a bit of realism as well. So I do this sometimes. Um, you can use stairs to make like a walkway, I guess, or a bridge. Now, it doesn't go all the way flat, but it goes pretty close. When you create the stairs, you can change the bottoms and you can add railing if you'd like. And you can change which side the railing is on if you only want it on one side or the other. Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep it slanted. Now what you want to do is get the uh, resize tool from Transform and go ahead and lay it all the way as flat as you can, which this looks like it's as flat as it goes. And then you can go ahead and move it around. I'm going to make it really long here. And then I'm going to put it, well, you have to grab the arrow. Sometimes that's hard. Let's see if we can make it any lower. That's as low as it can go. Now I'm going to go ahead and move it over to my mountain. And I'm going to make a bridge to, well, right now it's unknown. But you can make whatever you want. A bridge to another house. I don't know. Whatever you want. Let's take some pictures of our beautiful house here uh, with the camera tool. You want to click on control and left click to create the first view. And I usually click G to go into God mode so I can get outside of the boundaries. You can, once you find your position, you can use the scroll wheel to change the field of view. And then when you're ready, left mouse click and then click R to move on to the next camera you want to place. Let's take a picture of our couch by clicking control and left mouse click to create the camera. Now we're going to place the camera when we're ready with left mouse click and then click R to move on to the next camera. Same thing for the bridge because our bridge is fabulous. You can even go inside of a building to see outside of the building. So now that we have our pictures, we're going to go ahead and click Q. And then if we go to our property browser, we see our beautiful house with our three lovely pictures. And then my last little tip, uh, you see the highlight uh, there on the plant? If you want to record or something, uh, click on the camera, make sure you're in camera mode, and then the blue highlight is gone. That is all I have for now. If you want to see anything in more depth, just leave a comment and I will try to create another one if you would like. Have a great day everyone.